Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Melinda Desai. I am a cardiologist at the Cleveland Clinic. I uh, am a professor of medicine at Cleveland Clinic Lerner College of Medicine with a joint appointment in radiology. And today I shall be talking about cardiac imaging in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. What should every patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy know about imaging? In hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, Imaging is crucial uh, for not only diagnosis, but long-term management of these patients. Uh, patients need to realize that a lot of features of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy may not be evident on physical examination. Uh, this disease, the patients, if you are sitting next to me at an airport, I would not, I may not recognize that you have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy just by looking at you. Uh, so, a look at inside, uh, within the heart, uh, is crucial, not only to come up with a diagnosis, but also to plan a long-term uh, strategy with terms, in terms of therapy, um, be it medications, be it watchful waiting, be it surgery, or be it interventional uh, uh, procedures. What test is the gold standard for the diagnosis of HCM? Uh, besides physical examination and an electrocardiogram, all patients should have a comprehensive echocardiogram. Echocardiogram is a sonogram of the heart where ultrasound waves are used to generate images uh, of the heart uh, in its beating form. Today's technology has evolved to a point where we can get significant information and precise information, not only about the size of the heart, the location, how it is functioning, but also how the valves are behaving. Is there any leak? We can put color uh, during the imaging to a point where we can look at whether the valves are leaking. We can also put color uh, to see if there is obstruction to the flow of blood outside of the heart, which is seen in almost 70% of patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. We can also do a lot of other fancy things, including uh, measure velocities of your myocardium with every heartbeat, uh, as well as look at all the chambers uh, and uh, basically assess your ejection fraction or pumping chamber of the heart. We can quantify output coming out of the heart, uh, etc. So in short, uh, echocardiography is the gold standard, in my opinion, for management of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy patients. In addition, all patients should insist that the echo is as comprehensive as possible in the context of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And no echo, in my opinion, is complete unless the sonographer or the physician has done something known as a Valsalva maneuver, which is where you bear down, hold your breath, to provoke obstruction through your uh, outflow tract. In experienced hands, there should also be a test known as amyl nitrite. Uh, this is, amyl nitrite is a drug that you inhale for a short time. It is uh, generally a very innocuous drug. You inhale, it lasts in the system for a few seconds, but what it does is it creates the adverse pathophysiology and it increases obstruction. It provokes obstruction to the flow of blood, the outflow tract obstruction that most patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy should be familiar with. Unless you have these provocation tests, uh, your examination should not be complete. Of course, in the grand scheme of things, if you already have severe outflow tract obstruction at rest, then these maneuvers don't need to be done. But if your resting echo is normal, uh, then a question should be asked to the physician or the sonographer uh, to do a provocation. So to sum it up, in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, echocardiography provides a lot of information, uh, direct as well as indirect, uh, which would help plan long-term strategy, not only just the diagnosis. How will the results of an echocardiogram help determine the best treatment? When I have a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy patient, the first thing is to make a diagnosis, make an accurate diagnosis, make a correct diagnosis, because the burden of diagnosis is tremendous. 
you do not want to wrongly diagnose somebody because this is a lifelong sentence. On the flip side, you do not want to miss underdiagnose somebody who has hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and then give him or her a false sense of hope to continue with their lives when they could be putting themselves in danger by doing uh, activities that they shouldn't be doing. So the first and foremost aspect of HCM is using echocardiography is to diagnose. The other aspect is severity of the problem. How thick is the heart? How bad is the obstruction? How bad is the mitral valve leak? Is there something else going on? Do they have something known as diastolic dysfunction? How bad is the diastolic dysfunction? Uh, Diastolic dysfunction is a measure of stiffness of the heart. Uh, how, what is their ejection fraction? What is their heart function? So there's numerous things that can and will be obtained from echocardiography. So this is just from the resting echocardiography. Beyond that, there is the provocation, uh, as I alluded to earlier, uh, with uh, Valsalva maneuver and or amyl nitrite uh, to see if there is obstruction. I will say this for the record, if looked for carefully in a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy patients, if looked for carefully, 70% of patients will have outflow tract obstruction. This is crucial in terms of helping plan the future management, uh, future course of therapy. What are the limitations of an echocardiogram? Nothing in life is perfect. Echocardiography is a ultrasound-based technique which is very much dependent upon the person doing it. So if you have an inexperienced sonographer or a student doing this, chances are you may uh, not get the full spectrum of data that, one, that an experienced person could get, number one. Number two, even then past the experience aspect of it, if you have poor windows, this is dependent upon ultrasound beam penetrating the chest wall to image the heart. So if you have poor windows, a lot of smokers with emphysema may have not have good windows. If you are obese, uh, there are very uh, breast implants, there are various factors that can impede your ability to obtain good echocardiographic images. If that happens, then you are not going to have an optimal picture. Then the third aspect is echocardiography is basically the way you obtain data, it's a two-dimensional technique and a lot of times you may have <clears throat> basically foreshortening of the heart. By that I mean you may not get the entire picture of the heart, especially towards the bottom of the heart. And if you don't get the, uh, the full, if you're not able to open up the heart in its full extent uh, from an imaging perspective, then the measurements that you are gonna do may be wrong. And the other thing also, there are newer things that are coming up in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, like papillary muscle morphology, et cetera, which are not well visualized uh, on echocardiography, unless you are looking for it, uh, unless you have an experienced person looking for it. One might ask, what is a papillary muscle? It is the support structure that holds the mitral valve together. Uh, and we have, and studies have demonstrated that this potentially in some patients could play a role in causing obstruction and the pathophysiology of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So in short, echo is the first line diagnostic modality, but the key is to recognize where the shortcomings are and work around it. A lot of times if the wall definition, if the heart definition is not good, it needs to be recognized soon and you may need to give contrast to better opacify the heart structures. So if you take these, all these things into account, you will get a very comprehensive good echocardiogram, but if you falter at any one of these steps, you may have a suboptimal study.